Hey guys, Pete here. I've been working on my follow-up video in the protomolecule series, but have to stop the work temporarily because there's some pretty promising news. The authors of the Expanse series have declined to call the news that Season 6 would be the last a cancellation. They prefer to call it a pause. They say that's where the story's at, a natural pause. And that's a word that a lot of fans have been throwing around ever since the announcement of Season 6 happened. If you were devastated that we might not be able to see the final three books play out on screen, I'm here to tell you there's hope. And make no mistake, it's the kind of hope that goes beyond wish fulfillment from fans. How far beyond that? Well, that's up for debate. I did have one more preview video I was working on for Season 5, so I'm going to go ahead and mash those two things together. In this video, I'll get into what the authors said, and then preview where all the major factions in the story, Earth, Mars, and the Belt, where they're at going into the season. The early Season 5 reviews from critics are in, and they appear to be really positive. There's a new clip from Episode 3 of Naomi arriving at Palace Station and an announcement that Ty Frank and Wes Chatham will be doing an after-show podcast that looks fantastic. Before we get started, this will contain spoilers for everything that's happened in the Expanse TV show, including all the Season 5 promo materials that have been released. I'll be referring to the books while avoiding future spoilers there. If any of that scares you away, please consider subscribing on your way out. I'm a big fan of The Expanse, I'm going to be putting out content throughout the season, and you probably won't see most of it when the bigger channels swoop in, so any support is appreciated. So with that out of the way, let's get started. For the news that the writers don't consider the show cancelled, Polygon is reporting that Ty had this to say at a recent press event for the new season. We have what we think is a very natural pause point for the story after season 6. It'll feel like a satisfying end to the story we've been building over the first five seasons. I think one of the things that is sort of an outmoded idea is the idea of being cancelled. That in itself isn't much, but he continues saying, Alcon, our studio, is very committed to the IP. They have lots of plans. We'll see what happens after that. But we will have a satisfying story to the TV arc in the sixth season. His writing partner Daniel Abraham finished off with this. This is a conversation we've been having since we were canceled the first time. We've been talking about what the shape of the show could be, and this sixth season arc was always one of the options on the table. This is not something that we're having to scramble for. We built something this shape, and it's kind of awesome that we get to do something that's this shape, because we didn't, we didn't have one of those that was five seasons long. My takeaway to all of that is this. They knew going in it was probably going to be a long shot to be able to do nine full seasons. Ending at season five would have been a worst case scenario because it would have been a cliffhanger. The books could be described as three duologies in a final trilogy. Books one and two go together, books three and four go together, and this is most notable in five and six. And in that way I would have to agree, if you were planning things, you'd have to put the option of ending at book six on the table. In my previous video on the season six announcement, I brought this up. Up. And while none of this really adds up to them saying that they know that there's more expanse in the future, it is reassuring that they've been thinking about ending the story at 6 and have what they feel will be a satisfying ending. The one major problem I see with this is that we have this overarching narrative of the protomolecule. It's been driving the story, so I think that show-only fans will be expecting an answer to what that was all about. But we'll be in a lot better of a position to speculate on that after we see the ending of Season 5 in a couple months. I guess the most exciting nugget in this Polygon article is that the studio, Alcon, have other Expanse-related ideas that they want to do. This will likely feel like a confirmation to all the fans who were convinced that this 30-year gap that exists between books 6 and 7, which is a real thing that happens, that that was the reason they were stopping at season 6, that it was a big master plan to stop for a few years, to let the actors age into their future roles. Then they could come back and do books 7 through 9 in a film trilogy. For me, I think that's still kind of optimistic. They aren't saying that, at least right now. Maybe they will say something like that before Season 6 wraps up. I think it's a great idea. I'd love to see it. The scale of the final three books really is impressive, so I would love to see them throw piles of money at that and to produce that on the kind of scale that my mind imagines it at. But at that point, we are getting into that area of fan wish fulfillment. What he says is that Alcon is committed to the IP and they have lots of plans. 
I don't think that's something he would just throw out there lightly. But officially, I think we have to say that we don't really know what the future looks like. I'd be happy to discuss and debate that in the comments. I have ideas. I'm sure you do too. So to wrap this section up, I'd say there is hope. I think first and foremost, we can expect that they have an idea that they feel will be satisfying to complete the TV series as we know it, and then they're not ruling out the fact that we might be able to see more of the story in the future. So now, getting back to season five, which I was in the middle of writing a lot of words about for a final preview, considering I just spent five minutes talking about all this other stuff, I'm going to condense that down into something pretty succinct here. And just wrap up where the different factions are going into the fifth season. In my other preview videos, I've been talking a lot about this idea of the crew getting spread out. And it makes for an exciting time in the book series. The Rossi's returning to Soul System after traveling to Illis on behalf of Avasarala because some refugees had settled there and they came across a lot of protomolecule artifacts, which as we know, Holden and the crew have a lot of experience with. We've seen in the preview materials that they end up at Tycho Station. We know Naomi has picked up chatter. Her ex, Marco Anaros, who's also the father of her son, is stirring things up, and she's told Holden that she's going to leave to go look for Philip, and she doesn't want him to come along. Amos is going to take this time to go back to Earth to deal with some personal business, and we've also seen in the Season 5 trailer that Alex makes his way back to Mars at this time, and we see him interacting with Bobby. So that means that we'll have Naomi and Holden both in the belt, but separate. Holden at Tycho Station, and we have a new clip of Naomi arriving at Palace Station, where she runs into some old friends. And this is exciting for reasons that I can't say without giving book spoilers, but this clip in particular does show how this idea of splitting them up can add so much to the characters in this season. In this clip, we see Naomi being a belter. She's not only just around other belters, but she's away from the crew, and you can see how her personality and even her accent shifts when she's talking with them. At this point in the story, we already like these characters. We spent enough time with them that we're invested. So while splitting them up might seem like a problem, I think if they're able to capture what they did in the books, it really takes things up to the next level. So these two characters are in the belt, and then the other two crew members are in Mars and Earth respectively. So let's talk about the belt first. The opening of the ring gate, and then subsequently the ring network, really does change things in Soul System forever. As far as the belt's concerned, a lot of the people who have gone there and have adapted to living in low G are going to find that a lot of the resource extraction that they do isn't nearly as important as it used to be because you have 1300 new worlds, so that's a whole lot of new opportunities where they can produce those same resources. This is exasperated by the fact that they have adapted to life in low G, and so only about two-thirds of them will be able to go down to the surface of one of these planets and adapt. And that's with the right medication regime and a lot of preparation. We saw that Naomi wasn't even able to pull that off on Illis, and she's generally in pretty good shape. So naturally, since the ring gate is way out past Uranus, the best bet that the residents of the belt have is to set themselves up in a position to monitor the traffic going out to all those new colony planets. The plan is to convert the behemoth, which used to be the Nauvoo, into a station that permanently resides near the hub of the rings. We know the belt has several different factions, and they don't all get along or agree, but for simplicity we could kind of put them in two categories. We have the category that thinks that the best path forward is to form an alliance with the inner planets. And on the other side, the group that thinks that the belters should control the ring space, without having to answer to the inner planets. Broadly, this is going to come down to Fred Johnson's faction of the OPA and Marco Anaris' more extreme faction, the Free Navy. And we had plenty of hints in Season 4 that Marco has something going on with a group of Martians. So that is what the belt will be dealing with, and Holden and Naomi will be out there and will likely get sucked into it. As far as Mars, where Bobby and Alex will be, the reality is is that, well, it's kind of over. The conflict with Earth and their involvement in the protomolecule has caused problems, but the opening of the ring gate really is the big issue. Mars has been embarking on a generations-long terraforming project, and with 1300 habitable worlds out there, it really doesn't make the sense that it used to. 
This has been the thing that has defined Martians. The original people who colonized it created this dream. They were willing to live underground in tunnels for the hope that someday they would create a whole new world. As time goes on, people got used to living in the tunnels. That's all they've ever known. They never lived on Earth. They're used to living inside domes. It's been nearly 150 years since the Epstein Drive was invented, so they never even lived as colonists of Earth. So the big picture idea is less important to them. And we saw in the last season that a lot of the people are already looking to jump ship. Now I went into this in a lot more detail in my season four recap, but the bottom line is that when real colonization happens, when people start to go through all the gates, the dream of Mars and the terraforming project will inevitably fall out of favor. On Earth, things aren't quite as bad. We know that Avasarala lost her election. She's no longer in charge. And her enthusiasm for colonization is one of the big factors in why Nancy Gao won. Earth has a lot of problems. Overpopulation. Historically, there's been environmental disasters. Half of the population are on basic assistance. There's not enough jobs to go around. So you can understand that the citizens are looking for something to change their conditions. Avasarala was against this because she knew what a bloodbath a gold rush could turn into. But as far as where things are in the beginning of Season 5, the real threat for Earth is this attack that Marco Anaros is planning with the asteroid. So we have Amos returning, he'll be there as that all goes down, and we'll see if Marco's able to use this opportunity where he sees Earth as weak to strike at them and change the balance of the three factions for good. And for the protomolecule, it'll be interesting to see what they do. There isn't really a lot of movement in that story during Book 5. When Holden destroyed the protomolecule that was left on the Rossi, he cut his connection with Proto Miller. That part of the story is over for now. There is still one active protomolecule sample, the one that they gave Fred Johnson. And we did see in that first clip that they're at least going to be talking about the unknown aggressors, the civilization that they believe destroyed the civilization that created the protomolecule. So I suppose they're going to be moving some of that up. But at this point, we really don't know how far they're going to get into that in season six. We'll have to wait till after we see season five and we can speculate from there. It's all really exciting, and after reading the early reviews of the season, I think this really is going to be the best season we've ever seen. Book 5 has some of the most amazing moments in the entire series, and I just have to say that I can't wait to see how it all turns out. I'm going to leave it there. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Season 6 news, what you think about Season 5. I'll definitely continue making videos throughout the season, so I hope you'll join along with me as we go through it. Let me know any questions you have, anything you're thinking about, and if you're going to talk about future books, please mark those book spoilers. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.